As a longtime MMA fan, it saddens me to see the sport reach the stage where the long-term health impacts of stepping into the cage are becoming painfully clear. More and more we're hearing about these consequences, especially with the athletes sharing their experiences in the UFC class action lawsuit. At the same time, we're also witnessing some of the sport's greats refusing to hang it up, even as their performances decline. Before we get too far into this, please like, comment, and subscribe. I'm new to this YouTube journey, so please come along on the ride and let me know any improvements you think I can make to add to the entertainment of these videos. With that out the way, let's take a look at Donald Cowboy Cerrone, Nick Diaz, and Tony Ferguson. Cerrone and Diaz are both 41, while Ferguson is 40. Together they combined for a dismal 0-17 record in their last 17 fights. And yet, this trend shows no sign of stopping, with Nick Diaz slated to face Vincente Luque at UFC 310 in December. Cowboy, who after about two and a half years of retirement, is looking to make a return, hoping to set new records. Cerrone has 38 UFC fights, the third most in company history, and if you add his 10 WEC bouts, he's closing in on 50 fights under the Zufa Endeavor banner. But here's the thing, Dana White essentially forced Cerrone to retire for a reason. He's 0-6 in his last 6 UFC fights, including 4 TKO stoppages. This skid started back in 2019 with a TKO loss to Tony Ferguson, who himself is now on an 8 fight losing streak. Cerrone's 6 fight skid ties him for 3rd place in the UFC history for the longest losing streak, putting him alongside names like Phil Baroni and Hector Lombard. Ferguson on the other hand holds the unfortunate record for the longest losing streak in UFC history, surpassing even BJ Penn. While Ferguson's 8 losses have only included 2 knockouts, those knockouts were brutal. Justin Gaethje dissed out a 5 round beating that was mercifully stopped by the referee when Ferguson clearly didn't know where he was. And then there's a Michael Chandler front kick knockout, a highlight reel moment from UFC 274 that was everywhere for months. The thing about Ferguson is that he's too tough for his own good. He takes prolonged beatings that arguably do more damage than the flash knockouts or having the referee step in. As for Diaz, he's lost his last 4 fights, with one being overturned due to Anderson Silver popping for PEDs. Diaz has been incredibly inactive, with long stretches between fights due to suspensions and just being out of the game. This inactivity combined with his age has led to visibly worse performances each time he steps into the cage. In his last bout, a TK lost to Robbie Lawler. His cardio, once his greatest weapon, was gone by the later rounds. Diaz was one of those fighters whose style relied on overwhelming his opponent with cardio and volume. He and his brother Nate were well known for competing in triathlons and being able to outlast their opponents. But now, that ability is fading, and he doesn't seem to have much left in the tank. This leaves the UFC in a difficult position. These fighters, due to their legendary status, command large purses, which means the UFC can't afford to book them against anyone other than ranked contenders or rising stars looking to make a name off of them. The UFC isn't really the place for a legends division. They're constantly focusing on building new stars and growing the sport. Fighters like Cerrone, Diaz, and Ferguson would make much more sense in a promotion like PF Bellator, where they could round out bigger cards and add to the pay-per-view offerings. But this is the problem. The UFC doesn't want to let these marketable names slip to their competition, but at the same time, it doesn't make any sense to keep putting them in the cage with UFC brand and logo plastered all over it. At some point, the UFC needs to prioritize fighter safety over profit margins and squashing their competition. Now, while it's easy to point out the problems, there is a potential solution. The UFC has the resources to transition these legends out of active competition without allowing them to head over to rival promotions. They could take a page out of the WWE's playbook which offers legend deals to keep retired stars under contract while preventing them from appearing in competitor promotions like AEW. The UFC has an advantage that WWE doesn't, Fight Pass. They already host events like the Craig Jones Invitational, a grappling showcase that would be perfect for UFC legends to compete in regularly. The UFC could easily create their own grappling events featuring former stars, offering them a clear path to retirement in life after MMA. But what do you think? Are you on the other side of the fence and are still interested in seeing these fighters continue their careers? Or would you prefer to see them hang up the gloves for good? Sound off in the comments below.